John Clark, part two of my commentary on the Book of Aries. So, <clears throat> assuming you have prepared yourself by whatever means, um, prepared yourself in alignment with what I say in the preparation section. The first work is going to be the path of brilliance. Um, this involves three stages, basically, to the path of brilliance. The first, which I'll cover today, is <sighs> opening the channel between your mundane self, your static self, and the I. Okay? Opening this channel, easing its flow. You want to be able to reach the eye at any time and descend back to your uh, mundane self, etc. It needs to eventually become very simple, very easy flow of awareness up and down. Okay. Uh, then once you've accomplished that, we turn to generating the odd and eye light, the rainbow hued light. <clears throat> that is specific to human beings, okay? Then we go to generating the Catholic brilliance, which you will need in the later stages of the magic of essential meaning. Now, <clears throat> I divide in the book, I present the preparation, the path of brilliance, broken down into these three works, and then the magic of essential meaning, broken down into five works. But in reality, once you begin the path of brilliance work, you should begin the first work of the magic of essential meaning, which has to do with perceiving essential meaning. And there is a lot of that to be done because you need to learn incredible amounts about what essential meaning is, what flavors it has, and eventually in that first work you want to be able to perceive, directly perceive, little particulate bits of essential meaning. Okay? So that is such a long work and it's not dependent on your mastery of any of the lights, the rainbow hued Adonai light, or the Catholic brilliance. So you should begin that at the same time. Okay? But today, and in the next uh, subsequent two uh, probably um, videos, I will be talking just about the path of brilliance. Okay. What concerns us today is the first work of the path of brilliance. Now that, as I said, is opening this channel of awareness. It flows upwards and downwards. It exists continuously, this connection of awareness between our mundane awareness and the I is constant connection, but it's where our attention is placed. We're seldom conscious of that connection, and we seldom make use of that connection. So, <clears throat> what we do is we begin in physical awareness. This is the earth region of the mental body. Now, <clears throat> nothing in the path of brilliance is going to surprise you um, if you have done the work of the um, <clears throat> Self-Healing Archaeus, or the magic of yod heh vav -He adonai TMO. If you've done either of those, all the techniques here in the Path of Brilliance will be familiar to you. There's just a slightly different take on them, an abbreviation, if you will, of those techniques. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we begin in the Earth Zone of the mental body. Uh, and the, I will put a link to a video I did about the 
elemental body. Um, <clears throat> so the earth zone of the mental body. Then you rise up in your awareness to the water zone, the astral body, the water zone of the mental body, and you feel the unity of the two. Then you rise up to the air zone of the mental body, which is the thinking mind, the awareness, the awareness that we use every day, constant. This is the air region of the mental body, the thinking mind, which of course permeates the astral and physical bodies. Okay, and then we travel to our depth point because deep in the depth point, in the depths of the silence of the emptiness of mind, is the fire region of the mental body. Now this region is the non-thinking mind, the mind that is capable of perceiving the non-sequential eternal realm, which is where we're going with the eye. It's the part of our mind that perceives the eye and experiences the eye. So it's always present with us. It's easily reached, basically. And it's just a matter of, at that point, letting go and letting yourself be drawn up as in a whirlpool, as it were, uh, further up into the eye. We take a, a short, uh, you know, uh, awareness of the greater self, but our ultimate goal there is the eye. So once we have made this connection, we've reached the eye, spent some time there, then we come back down the reverse order. You know, we re-enter through the fire region of our mental body, the air region of our mental body, then the water region, and then the earth region. And we do that over and over. <clears throat> we get so familiar with it that it is second nature. You can do it anywhere at any time. That is the ultimate goal <laughs> of that process. But that's not where we need to get right at the moment. Eventually you do, just by the practices of generating the Agni light and the Catholic brilliance. Okay. So, <clears throat> get comfy and come with me on that journey. We'll take that journey for the moment here. So close your eyes and feel every inch of your body from your toes to the top of your head to your fingertips. Feel what it feels like to be in your body at this moment in time. Now, recognize that you are this person in your body. You have a personality, a way of being in the world. Now rise up to your astral body, the water region of your mental body. Feel your astral body. Feel the energetic of your astral body encasing, containing, your physical body. Feel it and shift your breathing to your astral body. You breathe in your astral body now and your physical body goes along with what your astral body is doing. And you now rise up to your awareness, just your awareness. This is the air region of your mental body your thinking mind that drives, that directs, that tells the astral body what to do and the physical body what to do. You feel the astral body breathing and you feel the heartbeat here, the rhythm, the slow rhythm of your heartbeat here in the air region of your mental body. Now you Go to your depth point, the individual self, the static self. You look into the emptiness for the fire region, the part of mind that does
does not speak, that does not think, and you let go, and you rise up with the flame of the fire region of your mental body, higher and higher. You see your greater self, you stand with your greater self as your greater self, and you pass up to the eye. And you are with the eye. And you feel, you see, you sense your connection with your greater self and the air region and the water region and the earth region of yourself. You are always connected with the whole of yourself. Your bit of the I experiences the wholeness of the I in its infinite nature. You look around, you look down, and then you descend past your greater self into the air region of your mental body, the thinking mind. The astral is below and the physical is below. And you descend back into your astral body and feel its energetic in your breathing. And then you descend into your physical body and feel your entire physical body right here, right now, what it feels like be you. And that, in short, uh, is my journey. <clears throat> it's very straightforward. And like I said, it's totally familiar with anybody who, to anybody who has done the self-healing archaeus or uh, the practice of uh, TMO. Because um, they all are basically about that channel of awareness and opening that channel of awareness, the flow in both directions and the connectedness of it all. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you might be thinking, oh my God, I've touched God. You know, I'm now master of the universe, the great adept of the ages. Well, <laughs> get over yourself, you know. Uh, that's total bullshit. The I is the most common thing in the universe. Everything has I. Everything is I. It's everywhere. It's everything. It is, like I say, the most common thing in the universe. Everything has this experience of I. And everything has an utterly unique experience of I because everything is utterly unique and it will have an utterly unique relationship with the I. So your experience of the I is going to be your experience of the I. There is no correct, there is no right. It's going to be your experience. And your experience of the I is going to evolve because every time you experience the I, you evolve <laughs> to some degree. There's always some sort of epiphany that occurs. It's glorious in that way. But at the same time, it's the most common thing in the universe. See, we've been lied to our entire lives for millennia. We've been lied to. We've been told that it, the I, the unity, God, you know, is this special thing that only a few very special 
people will ever realize great gurus, avatars, saints, prophets, miracle workers, that's just not true. So we all experience the eye continuously, but we have been told that that's impossible, so we don't know that we are experiencing it continuously. We don't recognize it for what it is and how simple it is, how fundamental to existing it is for us to experience the I. There's nothing special about it. What's special is that you are trying to become aware of it. You are trying to do it consciously, and that is what it means to be a human being, to consciously integrate the I into the present temporal moment. That is the point of existence, of existing. So this exercise is fundamental to this magic, this opening of the channel. You've got to grease that channel so that you slide up and down it with your focus of awareness. Okay? That, uh, that's another point. You never lose yourself. You know, I, I've heard people be afraid of getting lost and not being able to find their way back or someone stealing, you know, them while you're capturing them while they're away. That's all fantasy. Science fiction fantasy. Horror stories. Um, you are always connected to your existence. You are an incarnate physical human being, period. And you are a string of awareness, as it were, that connects with the eye. I mean, it's the connecting of awareness that you are. So when you rise up the eye, it is as this whole string of levels of Inus that you connect with the I. You are in there. You are part of that. So you descend. You always descend into yourself. It's inevitable. You must come back to your body. That is what we talk about, these cords that connect the different bodies. This is our awareness. The whole thing is awareness. That whole connection is awareness. So, <clears throat> as you rise up, it is you who is experiencing the I. It is your I experiencing the I. It is the I, eventually, that you will bring down into your physical being, who the I consciously looks through your eyes, in the physical, temporal, present moment, that is the goal, okay? And that is when the Catholic brilliance erupts. But we'll get to that. We start here with the channel, opening the channel, exercising the channel. It needs to become smooth and quick. So basically, it's like breathe in, rise up, exhale, rise, and fall down. It needs to become that easy and that natural. <clears throat> Eventually. <laughs> but not right at the moment. What you need to do is open that channel. Expand that channel. Give yourself room in that channel. Okay? And as I said, there it's a learning experience. You know, it's not just opening the channel, rising up and going down. 
you learn something every time you do it. It's initiatory. It's an initiatory practice um, that forwards you, forwards your evolution. So, we'll leave off there today. Um, it's a very enjoyable practice as well. And should be no diff present no difficulty for you, especially as you're working with step nine of initiation into hermetics. And that's one of the things in this process of rising up. It is fundamental that you feel your astral body, that you feel that energetic, and that you know what I mean by you take over your breathing with your astral body. Physical body is the blood flow, all the blood flowing around. The astral body is the breath. The mental body is the heart. The air region of the mental body is the heartbeat. Fire region of the mental body is the electricity that flows the nervous system, okay? So when you're focusing in your astral body, you're taking over the breathing. When you're focusing in the air region of your mental body, you're taking over your heartbeat, really. It's not so much you have to take it over, but you're aware of it. It is part of your awareness, this rhythmic beating of heart. And then, when you fly with the fire region, it's electric, okay? <clears throat> so, that's it for this week. Next week, we'll talk about generating the Adonai light. Okay, bye-bye.